you're so good and so faithful hallelujah well praise god you can be seated praise the lord hallelujah It's good if you're uh, if you have a mic ahead of time that uh, always helps I guess praise God God you're so good you're so faithful we worship you Lord Jesus uh, hit number two it's the number two the, yeah there you go praise God hallelujah God you're so good you're so faithful amen amen hallelujah well you know uh uh, we've been talking about words for a long time, and just this morning, um, we're in prayer. Actually, you said something about uh, refreshing, about fresh, and that word, but uh, refreshing kept stirring up in my heart today, and so I just kind of, you know, we just kind of want to go with that. I don't, I don't know if this is an interruption, you know, divine interruption to our uh, normally scheduled broadcast or, or what, but, but we'll just go with it and see where, where the Lord has us go. Amen. Amen. He's so good and so faithful. Amen. Amen. We worship him. He's so, so good. Amen. So turn with me to Psalm 23. Amen. Psalm 23. And I want to look at, uh, verse three. We're talking about refreshing. You know, we all get to that place. We just need to be refreshed. Amen. And, uh, uh, you know, we need, we, as believers, we can stay refreshed. But no matter where we are, uh, we can be refreshed. You, you understand what I'm saying? What I'm saying is we can always stay refreshed. We have that ability to stay stirred up and refreshed on the inside. But no matter where we find ourselves, we can get refreshed, like right now. The Lord's not holding back on us. Uh, he's not keep any, anything, keeping anything from us. But we can, uh, if I can just say it this, this way tonight, if we can maintain the refreshing of the Lord, we'd be a whole lot better off. Amen. Amen. Than going from refreshing to dry spell to refreshing, to dry spell, to refreshing. You know, I believe that God, that's not necessarily God's plan for us. And we've all, probably all been through those times and those seasons. But thank God for his mercy. 
and thank God for His grace and His goodness. And but you know we can walk in walk in uh, that refreshing of the Lord, and we can maintain the refreshing of the Lord. And this uh, Psalm twenty three verse three, I love this this chapter. And if I try to read the whole chapter, I'll get preaching. This is as far as we'll go. And uh, believe the Lord wants us to get some things some things done tonight. And so. So uh, verse three says this, he restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And I want to look at those first first four words in that verse. He restores my soul. He restores my soul. Now I want you to see this from some different translations here. Uh, The New International Version says this, he refreshes my soul. He refreshes my soul. You know, there are some times when I've needed my soul to be refreshed. And you know what he does? He doesn't complain. He doesn't gripe me out about it. He refreshes my soul. Hallelujah. Uh, The Amplified Bible says, He refreshes and restores my soul. Or in parentheses, it says my life. Amen. Uh, The Good News Translation says, (coughs) He gives me new strength. Somebody say, He gives me new strength. strength. He gives me new strength. He gives me uh, new strength. Strength where there was no no strength. Uh, Strength where uh, refreshing where there was no, I guess, refreshing where there was no, uh, uh, a little bit later talks about, Refreshing, and some translations say uh, watered, you know, and uh, where there was no water. And if anybody's ever grown a plant, you know, you have to keep plants watered. That was that's amazing to me. I found out that the only plant that I've ever kept alive is the plant that Levon, your neighbor, brought in after her husband's funeral. And that thing's like nine foot tall now. That's that plant out in the foyer. But and I thought about just cutting it off and getting rid of it, and then I'm like, now let's see how much taller we can make this thing. <laughs> and so I keep giving it water, and uh, keep refreshing it. But sometimes we've been just dry, and you know, you know something about soil. Whenever it gets dry, it also gets hardened, mm-hmm. and so stuff can't get in there. You know, it takes a while. It takes some refreshing to the heart. For the heart to be soft enough. I wasn't going to talk about this, but I guess I guess we are going to talk about this. But in dealing with people and walking in love, isn't it interesting how I always get back to walking in love somehow (laughs) or another? And I'm like, oh, man, I got to live by this now. Amen. (laughs) But isn't it interesting in dealing with people? Sometimes. We think after just one one showing of love or grace that their heart's going to be soft towards us. And when they're not like that, we get frustrated and we think, well, you've messed up. Uh-huh. You've messed up some, somehow. Or, or, or we say, I've messed up. I've messed up. Or the enemy, the accuser of the brethren starts saying, well, you've messed up. You've messed up. You've messed up. No. When soil is hard in the middle of summer... It takes a soft and a rain, just a soaking rain, you know, and not not one hour of it, not 20 minutes of it, but it takes time for that for that soil to soften up. You know, they told us, you know, the best the best time to plant grass seed is in the fall because the soil's soft and because the temperatures are low. And if you catch it just at the right time, it's the best time to plant grass seed. But, you know, it's after the soil's been doused with rain for not a short time, but a long time. And, you know, sometimes we say, oh, this is a good kind of rain, right? It's just steady, not a downpour, not a torrential downpour, but just steady, just a steady rain. And, you know, that's how that's how we have to pour in dealing with people. That's how we have to pour into into their hearts and some situations aren't going to turn around just like that but it's going to take time and it's going to take a sustained effort 
for things to turn around. You know, when somebody goes to the gym, this is how I've always wanted to see results when I went to the gym immediately. I went to the gym one time, I ought to be able to see results. You know, I would look in the mirror and go, man, I'm looking good, I'm looking good. And I, I can remember uh, one time I made the mistake of asking Rhonda, and she's blatantly honest. And she, I'm like, can you see a difference? And, you know, I've walked for like three days straight, so you ought to be able to see a difference, right? And she's like, no, I'm sorry, hon, I don't see a difference. You know, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, when we get to heaven, we'll probably find out that it's okay just to be soft. Amen. But anyway, but the thing about it is, you know, uh, when he says he refreshes our soul, and you think about, I thought about that soil being so hard. You know, hard soil doesn't, isn't receptive. Right. It doesn't receive very well. And so sometimes people have been through things and we just have to keep on showing love of God. We have to keep on walking in love. We have to keep on walking in grace. But you don't understand, Pastor, I've walked in grace like like three times, four times. This is, this is getting too much. We keep on, keep on, keep on. You know what's the Bible say over? Uh, it says love never fails. It was that First Corinthians thirteen? But love never fails. But that kind of love isn't the kind of love that happens over time because there's some description of that love. Uh, love doesn't keep record of wrongs, right? Love doesn't keep, it keeps no account. Uh, the King James says account, but it, uh, uh, one translation says it keeps no record of wrongs. <coughs> Records are kept not just for a split second of time, but over a long period of time. Amen. And so this kind of love that it's describing there in the 13th chapter is not is not a short term love it's a long term love it's a long term grace it's a long term mercy that we walk in you say well how can i how can i live in that how can i walk in that uh, by his help amen how can i walk in that love by his help and so uh I want to get back over here to this refreshing. I just kind of got up. That was a sidetrack. That was absolutely free tonight. Amen. And so, anyway, I was just joking. Everybody's so serious tonight. Amen. You can relax a little bit. But uh, his refreshing, he revives my life. He gives me new strength, fresh strength, fresh strength. Amen. That means picking something up. You know, revive is talking about something that's dead or real close to dead. And it's been brought back to life. And you may feel like there's a situation maybe you're going through that you feel like, man, I'm, I'm feeling that way. Maybe not physically close to death, but I feel like something's died in my life. No, he says here, he restores your soul. Amen. David said he restores my soul. And, you know, that's not just talking about that. You know, a lot of times people think soul is synonymous with spirit. But, you know, you have a soul. You live in a body, but you are a spirit. And the spirit man was the one who's changed. It's the soul, the mind, the will, the motions. That's not changed. And he says he says he restores my soul. Even when there's a battle going up there, there's restoration. Yep. If we'll keep our eyes looking at Him, there's restoration. Amen. Amen. There's help. There's help. And so sometimes, you know, maybe, maybe you just need to take this and go, Lord, You restore my soul. You restore my soul. You're refreshing my soul. You're giving new strength. Amen. I'm almost to the end of my own strength. But he's given me new strength. I don't know where that came from. I don't know where that strength came from the Lord. I don't think I can make it. I don't think I can go on. 
He gives you. He didn't say he might if you're good enough. He didn't pre. There's not a prerequisite thing for this. He restores your soul. If we'll keep continue to look to him. Now, if we look at, uh, you know, like on Sunday, we we talked about, you know, we had uh, these sayings up here that were the negative sayings. And we had the thoughts over here. And one said, I can't. I can't. Anybody ever felt like I can't? And we talked about turning, and we equated that with David over in uh, 1 Samuel chapter 17. And, and we turned and said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. So I'm going to keep my focus over here. I'm not going to stay focused over here. I'm going to turn my focus. As long as I'll keep my focus on the Lord, as long as I'll keep my focus on Him, Man, I'll tell you what, I can walk in that strength. Amen. Amen. Even whenever it feels like I don't have strength, uh, I can walk and live and rise up in that strength. Amen. Amen. Can I just say this? Uh, Somebody that's either listening in the room or on Facebook, you felt like there's no way you can rise up there is strength rising up on the inside of you. Amen. The devil is a liar. He's a defeated liar. And so where you didn't feel like you have strength and you feel like maybe maybe either you've messed up or something's happened, man, I'll tell you, there's a strength. If you keep your eyes on Jesus, there's a strength rising up on the inside of you. Amen. Rising up. To walk and to live in that refreshing. We are not meant to not to live unrefreshed. We are not meant to live without the refreshing of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, I've heard this since I was a little kid, but uh, by the time we're thirsty, we're already dehydrated. Anybody ever heard that? Yeah. You know, they're like, you need to keep fluid in you. You need to keep fluid in you. And by the time you realize, oh, I'm thirsty, you already passed the time that you need to keep fluid. You need to keep fluid all running through you. Your body is meant, (coughs) your body is is meant uh, to be hydrated. And uh, dehydrated, I looked that up. I know what it means, but I looked it up anyway. Uh, Having lost a large amount of water uh, from the body. Symptoms are thirst. Uh, lightheadedness. This is not a medical thing, so you know I'm not a doctor. But anyway, lightheadedness, dry mouth. The other thing is continual tiredness. You know, you can see when you need to get some more water on the inside of you. You can feel when you need to... Well, you know, as Christians, we're not the like the body's not meant to go without refreshing. Amen. The spiritual man is not to go without refreshing. Amen. We need to be refreshed. And that refreshing is by just turning your eyes upon Jesus. Just just saying, Lord, you're all I need. Like that last song we sang, you're all I need. You're all I need. Lord, you're all I need. You satisfy. Amen. The only one that can satisfy is Jesus. Amen. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 25 says this. For I will satisfy the weary soul. And every languishing soul I will replenish. (coughs) Languishing is a state of depression. Dispirited. To suffer neglect. This is languishing. To suffer neglect. To be weak or to be feeble. But the Lord said. And every languishing soul. I will replenish. The New International Version says this. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. 
the Berean Bible says this, I will refresh the weary soul and replenish all who are weak. Amen. God has a response for the cry of the heart. When there's a, a cry out uh, of weakness or not, not being able to move forward, God has a response to that. He says, I'll replenish you. I'll replenish you. I'll replenish you. Amen. And that's not something that happens once. It's interesting. It's interesting that, you know, earlier today, I drank water. <coughs> I drank a lot of water. I've been battling this throat thing, and so I've been just kind of keeping the water flowing. And, man, I go through bottles of water like crazy. Uh, you know, and, <coughs> but now I feel I need some more water. I had once, you know, as a Christian, as a believer, our spirits, the real us on the inside, is not meant to have a refreshing one time. And then go for the next 20 years and go and look back and go, man, that was a good night. Whoo, I was so refreshed. And man, I felt God and such a such a powerful time with God. You know what? We're supposed to have that today. We need that today. We need that refreshing today. Amen. Amen. Today. Hallelujah. And so it applies to our spiritual lives that we're refreshed every day. We are refreshed every day. Refreshed every day. And so the Holy Spirit is our comforter and our helper. And our strengthener. Say, he's my strengthener. He's my comforter. comforter. Amen. He's my comforter. Hallelujah. John chapter 14, verse 16 says this. The Father, I will ask the Father, and he will give you another, the Amplified Bible says, another helper. Comforter, advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, standby. To be with you forever. The Holy Spirit is our helper. The Holy Spirit is our strengthener. The Holy Spirit is our refresher. So, so tonight I would encourage you. Amen. You, you're spirit filled people. Amen. amen. And so look to him and say you're my strengthener today. Yes. You're not to go through life without his help. You're not to go through life in your own strength. Yes. Amen. Because it's not enough. Right. Anybody ever felt like not enough? Yes. When we're not enough, we realize who we are, but we've got our eyes focused on us. and We need to get our eyes focused on him. Yeah. Amen. Because as we keep our eyes on him, we realize that he's my helper. Mm-hmm. He's my strengthener. He's my advocate. You know, when the devil comes against you, Telling you all kinds of lies and telling you that you're not this and you, you're not that. You can stand up and say, advocate. He's my advocate. Yeah. Talk to him. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Talk to the advocate. What, what do they call the, ad, the advocate? Is the attorney. Yeah, talk to my attorney. Don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. Talk to my attorney. Amen. We need, to, we need to be that way with the devil. Amen. Talk to my advocate. I have an advocate. The helper, the Holy Spirit. Talk to him. You want to accuse me? Accuse me to him. And you know the great thing what? The great thing is that it's his blood. It's your advocate's blood that paid the price for you. It's the blood of your advocate. Oh, he's not, he's not going to be for you. The devil lies to you and tells you. He's not, going, he's not for you this time. He's already given his blood for me. What else is he not going to do for me? What is he not going to do? He's already given his life for me. What is he not going to do for me? And you know what? Your advocate, he's also your counselor. He's your helper. He's your standby. Amen. So when you need counsel and you don't know how to do with this, how to do it, how to deal with this, how to do that, I'll tell you what, he is your counselor. Amen. Amen. When nobody else is around to give you counsel, but the Holy Spirit is always there to give you counsel. Lord, which way do I go? 
what do I say? Not only what do I say, but how do I say it? Amen. Sometimes the way I say something, uh, all the time, the way I say something is as important as what I say. I can say the the right thing the wrong way, and it does no good for anybody. Well, I said the right thing, but it was the wrong way. And so they were closed off, and they didn't receive it anyway. Amen. But, you know, we don't have to. We can say the right thing the right way. Amen. Amen. How do we do that, though? By the helper. By the helper who helps us. I remember one time, uh, Keith Moore, I'll tell, I'll tell a story that I heard him tell um, many times. But he was going to talk to somebody. And he spent three days praying and asking uh, the Lord, how do I... How do I talk to them? Not only do I want to. He knew what to say. But he was asking the Lord for help. How do I say it? How do I say it? And so it took three days. And Lord help me. Lord show me. And the Lord helped him and showed him. And so you know it's important. Not just what we say. But how we say it. Amen. And so. And. How do we do that? By our helper, the advocate. By our helper, uh, the Holy Ghost. Amen. By the counselor that's leading us and guiding us the right way. Amen. Somebody say the right way. The right way. The right way. way. And so it's not difficult to receive refreshing from the Lord. But we do have to position ourselves for that refreshing. Amen. Amen. We do have to position ourselves for that refreshing. You know, sometimes when we position ourselves for that refreshing, sometimes part of that positioning is repentance. You know, part of that positioning is repentance. Part of that positioning is submitting to him. Amen. Submitting to him. Part of that positioning is going against the way the flesh feels. Amen. The flesh doesn't want to walk in love. The flesh. But the fle- but, but we submit ourselves to him. And we position ourselves to him. It's a heart positioning. It's a heart positioning. That we turn our hearts to him. And say Lord. I need refreshing. I need refreshing. Man. I, uh, there's been some hardening. I can tell. Some hardening in my heart. And I have to, whenever I find myself there, you know, it's just little by little. And all of a sudden, you're like, man, my heart's really, really hard. You know how I can tell for myself? Uh, You guys won't hold it against me, but the way I see people, I can tell. If somebody's telling me about their problem and I don't really care, then I know there's a heart issue. It's not with them. It's with me. It's a heart issue. You understand what I'm saying? Or, or if some, or if, or if I'm so focused on me that I don't, that I'm not looking to see somebody else and see what they're going through or it's a heart issue here. And I'm like, I have to say, Lord, refresh me. Lord, refresh me. But that's how I can tell in my own self. If I'm not, if I'm not soft towards somebody else, if there's a heart, I, anybody, I'm, I'm trying to say this without being too incriminating on myself, but, but if my heart's not soft towards somebody else and towards maybe their situation or what they're going through, or if I find myself disinterested, disinterested, then I know there's some hardness there. Good. Amen. That's for me. That's for me. I know, and maybe, maybe, maybe you have something else that you say you recognize. Say, oh yeah, that's. I can tell. I can tell. You know, the other thing is, Rhonda and I. We've been 
together for a long time, married for 26 years. And so we've been together for a long, been around each other for a long time. She can tell when I haven't been spending time with the Lord. And I can tell. Why? Just by our, just by our response. I mean, I'm not looking yeah. to find out. You know, it's not my job. And that probably wouldn't go over very well. Mm-hmm. If I walk up, you just be Rhonda for a second here. Amen. But if I just walk up to her and start telling her, I don't think you've been spending time with the Lord. Or if she does the same to me, well, you need to spend more time with God. I can tell you're being kind of a jerk right now. <laughs> and so and it may be true, but it may not be received. If it's given the wrong way, right? And so, but you know, we can tell. I can tell uh, with her, or she can tell with me, and I can tell with myself. But I'll tell you something. If I'll go ahead and do that, the Lord's so gracious and so faithful. If I'll just make that heart change. Just a tweak of the heart. Somebody says, well, Pastor, are you going to call us down? Are we going to get at the steps and cry and, and snot everywhere. Please don't snot everywhere. That's gross. <laughs> but anyway, but are we going to are we going to you know cry out to God? Son? No. You know, just a tweak of the heart. Amen. Just a tweak of the heart. And just say, Lord, I need your refreshing right now. I need your refreshing right now. And you know what? He has always met me. Right there. Not that I deserved it. Not that I deserved it. Oh, there have been times I've messed up so bad. And just with a stubborn attitude. and You know, just... But the Lord's so good. And so gracious. He's always just like, come here. Come here. It's all right. It's all right. That's what I shed my blood for. It's all right. Just come here. Just turn your eyes toward me. And you know, I can make a tweak and a heart change. And he sees it. And he refreshes my soul. There have been times that I've come into church. Anybody ever come into church with a bad attitude? Mm. Oh, man. Get it when you come into church. And you're the preacher. And you know you know what's going on on the inside of you. And you're just like, mm. and And you're nice because you have to be nice. But you know on the inside, there's a struggle. And God's so merciful. God's so merciful. So gracious. Uh, can I just, let me just be, I'm really bad about just being too blatant, but. Are you guys okay? You're not going to throw stones. See, might have any stones. Mary, do you have any stones to throw at me tonight? You don't. No. You. Okay. Okay. No, no. But I don't want anybody to throw stones or anything like that at me. I was checking to see if you had any stones to throw at me. But I've been standing over there, and um, I can remember a time where I just. Just struggled. There was a struggle on the inside. And I'm standing over there getting ready to come up and preach. I'm like, Lord. And so I just have to lay down my own problem and lay it to the side and say, we'll deal with this later. But right now, people need minister to. And I'm just like, Lord, if I need, if there's something (coughs) over there that I, if there's something on the inside of me that needs to be changed, if Forgiveness needs to happen. Repentance, Lord, I repent. Lord, I repent. I just lay it before you right now. And if there's, if if I need to forgive, I, I forgive right now. And you know what? The Lord's so gracious and so merciful that right there, man, just a refreshing, refreshing. And by the time I get up to preach or whatever, it's like that other stuff isn't even on my mind. Amen. And everything's clear to minister to the people that God's brought into the place. Amen. God's so good and so faithful. And so, you know, when you're going through something, when you're struggling with something, don't think that you're the only one. Or that, oh, well, 
pastor is spiritual. He's so spiritual. He doesn't ever have anything. No, no. Sometimes there's stuff that have to be laid down out there so that I can come in here and do what I'm called to do. Amen. Amen. And, you know, sometimes we just need to get a different viewpoint. Just get a different viewpoint and just say, Lord, I'm just going to look at you for a while. I've been looking at this problem. And I'm getting, the more I look at it, the more frustrated I get. You ever been there? The more I look at it, the more frustrated I get. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to look somewhere else for a little bit. I'm just going to look at you. And you know, he's so gracious to refresh. So gracious to restore. So good. Amen. So good. So faithful. Amen. Somebody say, he restores my soul. Amen. Let me just read down through a few of these uh, uh, different translations of restore. I want you to see this. He refreshes. Somebody say refreshes. 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 He gives new strength. New strength. He revives my life. Listen, Listen to this. Jeremiah chapter 31. For I will satisfy the weary soul. And every languishing soul I will replenish. Languishing soul. If you found yourself dispirited, if you found yourself depressed, if you found yourself uh, uh, neglected, you've suffered neglect, if you found yourself weak, if you found yourself feeble, not up to the challenge, not up to the situation, he says, I will replenish you. I will refresh you. I'll restore you. Amen. He'll restore you. And so you don't have to walk with your head down. You can lift up your head and go, he's my restorer. He's my restorer. In the face of a bad situation, he's my restoration. He's my replenisher. He is my refresher. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you. We thank you that you are our restoration. You're the one who replenishes us. You are the one who refreshes us. You're the one who restores us. And we give you thanks and we give you praise. And Lord, we turn our eyes to you. And we thank you for the restoration. We thank you that you've given us the Holy Spirit. Our comforter. Our counselor. Our helper. Our strengthener. Our standby. We thank you. We thank you that you are with us no matter what we face. And you're our strengthener. And you give us strength. You're increasing strength to us in Jesus' name. We give you praise. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, he's given me strength. Given me strength. Mm -mm. Say, weak no more. Weak no more. I'm no longer staying weak. I'm no longer staying depressed. I'm no longer <coughs> staying, uh, let me just say it for me, sick. I'm no longer yes. staying yes. in that place. Yes. Weak, feeble, distressed. Amen. Amen. No more. Amen. He's paid such an awesome price. Yes. Such an awesome price. Amen. Amen. For us to live a refreshed Life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you need an offering, I will just slip your hand up in the air. The ushers will get that for you. And we're going to pray and we'll close out this service. But uh, and if if you have an offering that you want to give tonight, just put it in that box at the back of the room. Back uh actually over Levon's shoulders. Amen. <laughs> And so you can put that offering in that box. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you for your goodness. Thank you for everything that you've done and everything that you're doing in us and for us and through us. Thank you for the opportunity to give, to bring our tithes and our offerings to you. Father, we give you thanks and we give you praise for it. 
Lord, it's an honor to give. It's an honor to sow into the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, we give you praise and we give you thanks. Amen. 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 God bless.